above what you can ask or think. Bishop Shelley Roth, he says that the Bible says that all things are passed away and behold, all things are new. Are you ready to receive God's word this morning? Some people are not ready. Are you ready to receive God's word? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Listen. There is an attitude to receive of God. Woo! The Bible says we are the righteousness of God in Christ come Jesus. On, on. And the Bible also says that Abraham believed in God and his faith was covered for righteousness. The Bible also says that faith comes by hearing and hearing are the word of God. Are you ready this morning? Yes. Turn your heads together. Woo! Make a sound yeah. to the Lord. As you receive that. God Sarah, our senior pastor, Reverend Doctor Alexander Sarapete, make some Hallelujah! Praise God! Please, in that spirit of gratitude, let's lift up our hands and just declare to the Lord, Lord, I'm ready to go forward. Lord, I'm ready. To I'm go moving forward, forward I'm in, moving my forward in my every life. Every part of my life is going every forward. Part of every life part of my life is making progress. I am born to succeed. I am born to win. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. All that concerns me is blessed. All that concerns me makes progress. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I am not a victim. I am a victor. I am a candidate of the grace of God. I am blessed around about. I am not economized. I am not micromanaged. The hand of God is mighty upon me. The, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Come on, let's respond to God in words. If you don't know what to say, I have put words in your mouth. Go ahead and repeat them again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You are a wonder. You are a wonder. You are a wonder. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Fill this place, Lord, with your power and your atmosphere. Cause us to live lives that are inspired. Now I ask that you will inspire my words and put breath and girth under my utterances. Let them bring life. Let them bring transformations. Let them bring hope and ex Amen. excitement Amen. to the hearts of men. Amen. Thank you, Father, because this is a done deal. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please let's give the Lord a round of applause. Hallelujah. Help me greet your neighbor to your left and to your right. Tell the person good morning. I know you've greeted the person before, but greet the person one more time. Say good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? God bless you. It's such a joy to have had ourselves on DSTV the last three days. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> I can tell you that what money cannot buy is bigger than what you can imagine. I'm telling you, sir, <laughs> there are blessings that money can buy and there are blessings that money cannot buy. I want us to not economize our gratitude. Let us not act like people that don't know what it means to be grateful. I want to say categorically we are grateful as a church. Can I hear your amen to that? I woke up that beautiful Monday morning and I heard, we are DSTV. Yeah, that's the first thing I read. I said, that's how they say, we are DSTV. And then it, it, might, it might just look like this is the end of it. No, it's just it's an announcement to more testimonies. It's an announcement to more testimonies. And, and I can tell you categorically that God is with us. Come look at your neighbor and say, God is with us. 
You see, we are not a bank that we pride ourselves that we have money or that money is with us. A bank should not, that's what a bank should say, we have money. We are not a bank. We are a church. And we are the church of the living God. Our greatest joy is that God is with us. And I'm so excited this morning. Please, if you don't know um, about what is going on, just please join us in rejoicing. Let's one more time give the Lord a round of applause and appreciate God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, sir. Amen. Let's take our seats. I know that very soon, this place will not only be filled, but we'll soon leave this place. Amen. Yes, I can see that. We'll soon leave this place. You know, there are two reasons. One, number one is that the ace is very chilling. Can make you just forget why you are here. <laughs> yeah, and and in, without disrespect, some of us don't want to waste our money. So we don't own AC all the time. You know what I'm trying to say. So, and some of us, we're just not ready to put one in our homes. Um, you know what I'm trying to say there. But you see, when you come here, you are very comfortable. Then the chair couches you. You know how the chair couches you? And you're just like, let's serve, it's not finished. <laughs> But oh God, there is a way to receive God's word. If you don't receive it well, you will come here and nothing will change your life. Don't be deceived by the AC, the coolants. It's, you are here for power and purpose. Please, are you hearing what I'm trying to say, sir? So in comfort, eh, one of the things that comfortable people have learned is to make themselves uncomfortable in some ways. Because that's the price to pay to stay comfortable. I'm telling you, sir. Sometimes you see them lie down on the floor. Just to make sure that you are not too comfortable. It's necessary. That thing that makes you overcompensate when because you suffered, suffered, suffered. When you now get to cover, you say, Yes, yes. That's not the way to sustain success. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? Don't be deceived that ah, I don't suffer. When I just reach out, I so rock, I will just chop. That's that's wrong compensation. That's not how it works. Yeah, no, no, no. Let me chop. I'll just chop first. Five days. See. That thing will make you stay small. One of the things that gives me a lot of hope and excitement is that I know where some of us are today. And I know that God is taking you on a journey. Yes, I know. That's why I'm confident that this message, I've taught it for years, it has made many people bigger than where they came from. I've seen it. And thankfully, me myself, I'm not on the floor. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know, thankfully, I'm not on the floor. Thankfully. Thankfully, if I was just teaching it and it's not showing in my life, you to say maybe it's just teaching people theory. No, 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 no. I can show you how to succeed. I can show you. I can tell you this one will not fly. I can tell you. And that's why you have God giving us mentors and pastors and distributing his grace around the world and especially in this ministry. I'm so proud to say that by the grace of God, I am your pastor. I'm so proud. I'm so proud. I'm so grateful to God. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to God. And I want to let us know that we are on a very executive mission. Very executive mission. All right, let's go into God's word right now. Um, there's some things I want to cover today. And I believe that it will bless our hearts. Amen. Um, I will ask that please, once again, I want to encourage us to share our testimonies. Testimonies give credence not just to people, but to the world and the spirit world especially, that God is somewhere. Yes. It's so important that you can trace that God is here because there are testimonies. And many of us have had testimonies you are not sharing. Not sharing. I don't like sharing testimonies. How will I look like? I don't like speaking English. If that problem had happened, you would speak English. If that problem had happened, your English should be clear. Please, sir. I'm so Did you hear what he said? He might not have been here today. And that's how life will be. Nobody will know anything that happened, if not that he came to share the testimony. That this is a survivor of God's mercy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> if not because of God, they will just be ruling handcuffs. So we're waiting for the man after the service. <laughs> Do you understand? But God showed up. So when you don't know how to reflect God's work in your life, he will just be watching you. Because God has a human character sometimes. For example, he says, drawn to me, I will draw nigh to you. That's a human being. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> draw to me, I will draw to you. If you forsake me, I will forsake you. That's how God thinks. I'm not the one that wrote it. That's the, we call it the, the anthropomorphism of God. In other words, that part of God that makes him behave like a human being. Uh, do you get what I'm trying to say? That makes him behave like a human being. 
if you forsake me, I will forsake you. If you beg me, I will beg you. If you, if you do kind, I will do kind. As you do to me, I will do unto you. In that thing, God has it. Don't forget we came from him. So whatever we are carrying, we are humans. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? And God made human beings. So don't forget, God is watching how you are behaving. You remember when he was talking, he said, if I was your governor, would you give me this kind of money? Do you remember that scripture? Telling you that, look, me too, I have taste. Don't be, I get class. Don't, don't be treating me anyhow. That's the, that, that's human nature of divinity. I'll come into that shortly because it's part of what I want to talk about. So I want to just encourage us, be sensitive. Be sensitive, treat God with discretion. Don't be plain why you, I say it's God, it's just a forgiving God. He's watching your behavior. He's watching your behavior. If you pay him attention, he will give you attention. If you forsake him, he will forsake you. Oh God in heaven, I know you will never forsake that, that sleepers, that, 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 that sleepers, he has slept on you. You think you can sleep? You think it's only that? You think it's only that can sleep? I'm sure you know what I'm trying to say by that context. Yes, you are just oh God, that 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 does not sleep nor slumber. The God of Israel that watches over Israel, but you have been playing. That's the part that we must not forget because He's God. Don't forget He's God. Praise God. I said He's God. I said He's God. I said He's God. I said He's God. Very important to keep that in our minds. Yet, he watches our behavior. So, I want to encourage you to please be of the best of responses to him. Share your testimonies. Eh? He's not going to haunt you for it. Share your, some of you, you know you were broke. They should not have paid you. You know. But God showed up. Some of you, for, for years now, you've never begged for money or food. You've never Some of us here, you apply for something they gave you free. What they've refused others. Some of you here, you know God showed up for you in ways that nobody could have. Yet we must put spoon and knife into your mouth. Testify, testify, testify. What kind of person are you? If I was God, I would collect all my testimonies. What's that? I labor over you. I make sure that your, your family does not fail. I do this for you. I did this for you. You can't just come and say, praise the Lord. I want to testify of the goodness of God. No. No. Your own is that, look, God, do more. God, do more. You have not finished yesterday's own. Is anybody grateful this morning? Rise to your feet and give God some praise and just bless the name of the Lord your God. Thank him for all his goodness. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Forget not all his benefits. What are the benefits of God in your life? Come on, bless the Lord and appreciate him. Appreciate. I'm not saying that you are, he has finished. I'm saying thank him for the one he has done. I'm saying thank him for the one he has done. I'm saying thank him for the one he has done. We give you praise, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Please, you can take your seats. That's why I know that active faith does not disregard, I mean, that active faith disregards contrary evidences. Some of us today, now maybe you woke up and you saw a bad sign. Something that you were not looking for. Oh, this place is paining me. Relax. It is the strength of the last testimony that will overcome this present challenge. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Eh, it's because you didn't testify. That's why you're not keeping it in mind. When you testify, you will remember what you said. That. Yes, now just think about it. I have been in situations too many times to ever be proud in my life. I can't be proud. This man, I've suffered enough to keep humble. <laughs> I'm humble. Oh, yes. Don't mind my big words and strong confidence. So, is the anointing? No. When I finish, I'm very mild, though. I'm telling you. Don't, don't be deceived that by, by the power of my words. I am inside my chest. I am a gentleman. When life has shown you, you will settle that. You will have no place to boast. It's because you still have something in you. You are defending yourself. I don't want them to spoil my name. They've spoiled my name. They've shattered the name. They've torn it. They've removed the X, put it as Y cross. They've nailed him to the cross doesn't matter if God be for us. If God be for us. It doesn't matter if God be for me. It doesn't matter who is against me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This is so important, sir. That one of the things you should never stop thanking God for is his presence with you. 
God is still with me. Who am I that you are mindful of me? Not the son of man that you remember me. Who? Very important disposition to life. Oh. I will finish with this discussion at the end of this teaching. So keep humble. Oh God, you are not anywhere yet. Oh. Actually, you see, that's the thing. Small comfort. Some people just misbehave. Small comfort. That somebody just came and served you. Would you have tea? Hi. <laughs> Please. Put coffee. Put milk. Put. <laughs> Learn to put yourself. When life is getting more comfortable, put yourself under a pressure. Not to over relax. Yes. Keep yourself reminded that, but for God, I won't be here. Keep, don't be too, that's why it says, don't overeat and forget that God is your God. You just chop, say, wait, what else? What else? What else? Nebuchadnezzar, you remember that guy? This girl, don't get me started. Say, bring, <laughs> <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar, after talking, he says, see what I have, I have achieved, actually. God said, you will go to the University of Animals. This, you will go to the university. Send him to the, a king. You see, there's a measure of praise that man cannot handle. There's a measure of praise that man must not take. People say, ah, you are trying to see how you are. Just tell them, oh, God, easy. It's not anything that has to do with me. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm telling you, sir. It has nothing to do with me. I don't know why I'm, st I'm stepping into this zone this morning, but I just know, I, I believe I'm saying something to someone. Yes, don't let the devil deceive you into your dis downfall. Yes, don't let him deceive you into your downfall. If, if things are working, just be, you know I told you, if he's working, smile. Yes, don't laugh, oh. Don't laugh. Relax. Smile. When you count those dollars, chop, 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 and you can pay. When you hit your ATM and it does not bounce. When people don't despise you anymore. In the same place where they once laughed at you. Sir, smile. Because there is more. Before I start teaching, can someone just rejoice one more time and just give God some praise. And just bless the name of the Lord his God. And give him some praise. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. Father, we bless you. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Please, let's take our seats in God's presence. Thank you very much for participating in my joy this morning you know you can look at things and say ah when we refill this place oh god i'm grateful for this one yes, i'm grateful yes, grateful sir Gr very great and i'm not pretending yes, if you know something about me i don't know how to even pretend even with god yes. i don't know to, if, if you ever see god ask him how does how do i pray to him you need to hear what he tell you alexander he says it as it is that's why if i can talk to god boldly i'm not afraid of talking to you I'm not afraid. I've lost my fears. I talk to God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. I'm not afraid of talking in my mind with you. That's why sometimes you see that I'm sounding very bold. Because oh God, who, is, who I'm gisting with is bigger than everybody. Amen. Amen. I feel that would encourage somebody here. Amen. Let's just drop whatever is in our hands and give the Lord a round of applause and appreciate it. Amen. Amen. So we're going to talk today about moving to new levels of victory and higher heights by the force of righteousness the force of righteousness please i want you to hear my heart because today i'm speaking from my spirit i have a loaded note no doubt just to for adventure i need to be cued but i want you to listen to the spirit of my conversation you were not born to stand still you were not born to stay on one position. You must move from one level of glory to another level of glory. The Bible says, not I, that we are changed from one level of glory to another level of glory by the Spirit of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. So we are ordained to move from one face of beauty to another face of beauty. Your life is not organized to stand still. I want to please hear me very well, sir. You are ordained, saved to make progress on earth. Now, the thing that will be a mistake, and I need to quickly drop this in, is the progress is not for your own sake. It's for his name's sake. Yes, uh -huh. He leads us in the path of righteousness. Why? For his name's sake. For his name's sake. So, when you are led in the path of righteousness, which is the path of getting better, it's not for yourself, sir. The mistake of anyone is to think that any good thing that
that comes to your life is for you alone. You are making a big, there's no better way to short circuit your destiny than to become selfish with whatever you have as resources. God wants us to make progress, but your progress is so that in your light, others can see light. God wants you to make progress. And so in making that progress, he starts by saying, look, I'm going to make, see what it says now in Psalm 84 verse 7. It says they go from strength. Somebody says strength. It says they go from strength to strength. Them that appear in Zion. Coming to church alone moves you from one level of strength to another level of strength. Look, listen to me, people of God. You were born again to shine again. You were born again to shine again. If you are not born again, you are not even shining at all. God has a plan for you and I. And his plan is that we make progress. The word of God says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Thoughts of good to bring you to an expected end. Not of evil. God wants you to move from one level of glory to another level of glory. Put up your right hand and say, I'm moving from one level of glory to another level of glory. Say, I'm moving forward in my life. Say, like though you know your words are powerful. Say, I'm moving forward in my life. Say, all that concerns me is making progress. Everything around me is making progress. Say, I am not standing still. I am not stagnant. I am a progress in motion. I am God's candidate of evidence. In the name of Jesus. Say I am making progress. Emotionally. I am making progress. Spiritually. I am making progress. Financially. I am making progress. Maritally. I am making progress. Academically. I am making progress. My career. In the name of Jesus. Say all that concerns me. is making progress. To the glory of God. Somebody shout your loudest. Hallelujah. There is power in these spoken words. As you are saying it, you are already moving. You are stepping into what you have declared now in the name of Jesus. Please let's take our seats one minute. Now, so God in his usual style likes to be the one that helps you succeed. He said, look, if you be willing and obedient, I will make you rich. God wants us to succeed. Now, listen, this is important. I wrote here in my notes, I said, God wants us to know him. God wants us to know him. And it's so important that you know him. Why? Those that know their God. Complete it. That shall what? They shall what? Be strong. Hallelujah. They shall be strong. They shall be strong. Don't, don't, come, don't put another English. They shall be strong. You are strengthened today in Jesus' name. So the knowledge of God confers strength on the candidate who knows God. You are strengthened. Now, let me ask you a question. Would we just be strengthened just to be strengthened? No, it's for a purpose. Why? And they shall do exploits. If your life is not characterized by exploits, then we can question your strength and therefore your knowledge. Yes. Exploits. Exploits. Ladies and gentlemen, you are not safe to start to sit down and count. No, you are safe to do exploits. What does exploits mean? Supernatural outstanding results. Results that set themselves as pace setters in the society. Some of us need to hear me very well. God is looking out for your performance in exceptional living. You are safe to generate exploits. Somebody say exploits. exploits. Say it again, say exploits. Now, in God's traditional method, in an attempt to get us into that zone, what he did to us was that he conferred upon us the gift of righteousness. Hey, this is a big deal. Oh, this is a big deal. That God looks at you and says, if I'm going to ever successfully help you, I'm going to have to make you, first of all, righteous. You will wonder why this is so. First of all, let's explain it to ourselves. Righteousness means God making you right. God making you what? Right. The Bible says that we are the righteousness of God where? In Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. There are principles to life. And when you follow the principles, you will get the results. Life is so beautiful when there are principles. One of the things I like about principles is that it makes for equity. 
you don't yes you don't say they did this one if you press the button the button will open you can stand at atm you don't say he opened to this man because he's he's fair it doesn't matter they say no 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 it's because he's from britain it's not true if a black man comes there and inserts it correctly the atm i mean he will get the result enter your pin five five four four six that's a pin i'm just guessing then you enter it, Papa, and you say, how much do you want? I want 500,000 or 50,000 or whatever. Press it. Bam. When you press it, it responds to you. It doesn't discriminate. That's how principles, when you follow them, it does not discriminate. There are principles to maintaining marriage. That you are told does not mean you know it. That you are, you are even married does not mean you know it. Uh-huh. You need to know there are principles for success. There are principles for making progress. Rather than looking for the miracles, go for the principles. Because principles don't only make for equity, they allow for repetition. You can repeat it. Please, do you understand what I'm saying here? If the ATM does not work, you pull it out. You can even pull another card and insert it again. You can repeat it. You can come tomorrow and do it again. So, principles are, the, are God's pattern for each man to predict how he wants to succeed. You can predict. You can measure how well you want to succeed. One of the things the Spirit of God said to me is that we become righteous by faith, but we stay righteous by faithfulness. And I said, Lord, what do you mean? It's true. By faith, you come to Christ. But if you are going to ever enjoy this Christian living, you must find out what are the things I must do to continue to enjoy my salvation. I think it was Mr. Charles that said that thing one morning like that. I said that the salvation is, um, the, is unconditional, but to enjoy the manifestation of that condition, that salvation is uncon- I mean, it's conditional. Yeah, That salvation is unconditional, but to enjoy the salvation itself is conditional. Yes. God is a God that is righteous. And what he does is that he makes you righteous. What righteousness means, let me quickly explain that before I go to the depth of what I want to share, is that righteousness is a nature. Think about it like this. That the nature of divinity is righteous. <laughs> the nature of human being is human. Human being. You are now a righteous being. So just remove that human and put it as righteous. It's an elevation of your category. Don't forget I told you that there's animal life, there's plant life, there's animal life, there's human life, and there's divine life. That divine life is called righteous being. Human being is called human being. Animal is called animal being. Plant is called plant being. You must fall somewhere if you're a living thing. Yes, you must fall somewhere. There are righteous beings on this earth. God made them righteous because they believed in God. That act of righteousness upgraded them from being human to becoming divine. When you, are, when you have faith in God, God says, come up hither. Come up higher. So that righteousness is an elevation of our status from just being human. So there are human beings, human beings, human beings. That's righteous being. Righteous being is qualified because I believe in God. Listen to me, sir. Don't make this Christianity lack power. Don't make this Christianity lack testimonies. This understanding will change your life and your family. When you understand that you are the righteousness of God in Christ, you will no longer permit some rubbish to be happening to you. You might think that they are normal. They are not happening to everybody, sir. It is the ones you qualify that will happen. So what happens? God says, this human being status, when you say, Lord, come into my life, he upgrades you to a righteous being. Sir, a righteous being does not do wrong things. So in that state of righteousness, you are not able to do wrong things again. You know why? Because you are a right being. Right beings don't do wrong things. Right beings don't do wrong things. I know you'll be arguing that, but we are righteous. It's because you are still a juvenile in your righteousness state. There is the infantile, I keep using that word, infantile stage of divinity or of righteousness. It's still the infancy. When an animal, a lion, a cub, you know, runs away from an antelope, it's only a matter of time. <laughs> it 
will grow. If that like that baby lion or cub, we call it, can stay long enough around his father, that's <laughs> Papa Lion, and can grow like Aslan. I mean, it was no Aslan. You know, if you can grow like Aslan, then you will understand. <laughs> How was no Aslan? It's not Lion King. Go. Chronicles of Narnia. Chronicles of Narnia. Go and watch it. Some of you don't watch films. See, if you can grow like Aslan, you will see that that baby cub that ran away yesterday was actually a lion all, all along. It did not change because it, it was always a lion. That it did not, maybe he wanted to roar and just say, whoa. You think he mewed. <laughs> Give it time. That's the stage where most of us are. We are still juvenile divines. We are still young and we don't really know our full potential. When a cub sees a, an antelope, says, look at this big thing. It shifts from it. You are looking at challenges and you are running away from it. In no little time, if you can stay under my teachings, you will see that a giant will rise in you. Your character will be strengthened. Your nature will begin to find expression. The things inside of you will begin to give expression to God's greatness and righteousness. Why? Because, not because what I'm teaching. I'm only unveiling your divinity to you. I'm only showing you who you really are under standard temperature and pressure. Who you really are and what you can do by the nature you have received. Friends, we are the righteousness of God. Righteousness, therefore, is a force that makes a being express divinity. Write that down. It's a force that allows a being express divinity. It cannot be conferred on animals. There are some animals that can camouflage like plants. A chameleon, when it stays on a tree, you will not even see it's there. That is an animal living the life of a plant. There are some men, there was recently, <laughs> I heard, I read some, I don't know if it's true, that one man was dressed like a something, maybe an antelope or a lion or something in the bush and has been there for a while until another lion came to attack it. He was trying to live the animal life with the human life. Come on. Animal, no, no difference. Animal saw food and came at it. Interestingly, he is still alive as I read, if I'm not mistaken. What's my point? You have a divine life today. And I want you to know that God does not just give you divine life so that you can just have it. He wants us to produce something with it. <laughs> so we are not just made righteous just for righteousness sake. We are made righteous to accomplish exploits on earth. Let me flow with my notes. So number one here, I wrote that God wants us to know him. God wants us to know him. God wants us to know him. And knowing God is a process. Write that down, please. Knowing God is not an event. It's a process. It's a lifelong event. Our God is an eternal God that has, give us, that has given to us time to understand him. So the much of God you can understand in your lifetime is to your advantage. Number three, God is revealed by his word. Write that down. In knowing God, we know God by his word. Please just follow me. I'm taking us somewhere and I want us to get there fast. Number next, God is revealed by his spirit. God wants us to know him. Knowing God is a process. God is revealed by his word. Hallelujah. God is revealed by his spirit. By his spirit. The spirit of the Lord helps us, unveils us to know God beyond the veil. Number next, God is revealed by our experiences. Our own experiences. And lastly, God is revealed by others. God is revealed by others. And, and I wrote here, in the light of what we're talking about early morning today, that understanding God is accomplished by obedience in trust to God. Understanding God is accomplished by obedience in trust to God. So we say that your comprehension is not a requisite for your cooperation. You by faith understand God. That act of faith, that act of believing God 
is something that will help you understand God. For example, Jesus Christ came and said, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. We did not understand everything he was saying, but we, we did it. We are still doing it till today. And that singular act produces a righteousness of God that helps us to know God better. So, obedience is a very key way to understanding God. Now, I said this is very important that we understand God and complement our zeal for God with knowledge. In Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 and 24, it says that God wants us to know him. Not just boasting that he understandeth and knoweth me. That's verse 24. So God wants you to know him. Somebody say, I know God. I, know God. I, don't, I, I deliberately say you know him, not because I, I, I would have said I'm knowing God. Mm -mm. I want you to say it again. Say, I know the Lord. Know the Lord. Say, the Lord, knows me. the Lord knows me. Number two, when we know God, we know ourselves. You can never truly understand who you are until you know God. It is the measure of God that you know that are of God that allows you know yourself. First John chapter 3 verse 2. You can write it down and go and check it at home. Because we are in him. Our true identity is in God. Number two. And that's now under number two. Now number two B. In this kingdom, knowing God advances us. In this kingdom, knowing God advances us in every wise. Knowing God advances us in every wise. When we know God, we gain his righteousness. Please listen to this discussion today. When we know God, we gain his righteousness. And like I said earlier on, righteousness is a status that confers value on the one that possesses it. I want to go from today knowing that there are blessings to righteousness. If it is true you are the righteous of God in Christ Jesus, there are blessings that accompany you. There are blessings. Sir, there are blessings, sir. <laughs> you know, if you watch some films, maybe some of these films, you hear somebody, are you listening to me or you are distracted please don't be distracted we're in church amen yeah. if you are with me this morning can i hear you believing amen yeah. glory to god Hallelujah. if you watch some films you hear some people sometimes in some films a particular um country america you hear the guy say i'm an american <laughs> eh? so what should we do he understands something that statement is i am not supposed to be in this situation <laughs> If the border is closed and the gate is locked and he just shouts, and I'm an American, I'm an American. Say, who are you to say? They say, America, where's your passport? Yeah. In fact, they even let him in first. Then he now says, I forgot my passport. They take him inside without evidence so that they are not mistaken of his status and treating him poorly. Please, are you listening to what I'm saying? I want you to know that that treatment is an example of what it means to be righteous. Before we ask, are you guilty? When you speak in the spirit, please listen to this. This world is spiritual, sir. When you say it, I am the righteousness of God. The realm of the spirit knows it. He's the, we're not supposed to touch him. So, when we say we're the righteous of God in Christ, somebody says, I beg, what does that mean? Say it first. So, at least you, whatever the blessing is inside, you benefit first. That's why I said, it's not until you understand before you cooperate. If you are waiting to understand it, we have to take you through Bible school. Before we finish, you might have died. So, first of all, believe what the man of God is telling you. After all, it's because you believe you came here and sat down. Yes, so receive what I'm telling you, sir. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That statement sends a blow against the devil. Touch not. Touch not. Let him go. Especially when you now know your blessings. 
That's why to deal anyhow with a righteous man is a dangerous thing. God is his defense. <laughs> the Bible says, blessed is that man that God does not impute iniquity. The righteous man does not do anything wrong by his nature. I want to hear it. A righteous man can drink water. From this side, it is righteousness. If you like, let him turn the water like this. Oh, oh it is righteous. Eh, righteousness, you can't say that's how not to drink water. There is no law against him. There's no law. He's a man that is under the law of the nature and the life of God. When we receive the life of God, the nature of God, please listen to it. We call it Zoe. The nature of God is granted to us as a credit. We cannot do anything to earn it. Please, what did you do to be human? You see, some of us, we don't like to apply our thinking to some things. What did you do to be human? You came out. Maybe as they spam, you won the race in your mother's womb. You came out. That's, that's probably all you did. You are not even conscious. But you are fully human. Anybody that treats you less than a human being, we can sue him. That's the same way anyone who treats you less than divinity, we should sue him. You are not an ordinary person. The nature in you by faith, please don't be thinking about this skin. Don't let this physical thing limit how you think. Don't let how you see your father limit how you think. Don't let what you see in the mirror limit what you think. It's a realm of faith. There are many things that you have never seen yet you believe. I was asking us the other day, have you ever seen your intestine? Some of us, we drew it to pass Waek. What you know, have you ever seen your intestine? How does it look like? But if I say draw it now, some of us remember how we drew it. We draw long. Maybe your drawing was not nice. It doesn't matter. But you draw, then you do like this, you do like this, you do like this. You even show everything. Recticulum, anti-recticulum, kinico, kinico, small stomachs, big stomach, the all manner. You even drew the one of an animal. Goats. Seven parts of four, four stomach cells. You know. Listen, you've never seen that, but you believed it. You've never seen it. Have you ever seen your retina? You've never seen your cornea. Where, where, where did you put it? But you believe. Some of us have never seen a sore but you believe it. I'm just trying to say that there are many things you've never seen that you believe. America is fine. Have you ever been there? But you believe. There are many things we've never seen. Why are you finding it difficult to believe that you are God's child and his righteousness? Why are you finding it difficult to believe that you are God's righteousness today and that as you are walking on this earth boldly, you are God's righteousness that is exempted from every trouble? Why? Now, if you don't believe it, you will not experience it. That's the painful part. So, it will just be gist. But if you believe it, you will start to see it. Eh? So is this how it works? Eh? You mean that this righteousness is just like I believe? Eh? Because you have been used to working hard to be qualified for good. Now God says, I am giving you good without you working hard. By your nature. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying? Why is this necessary? Let's go to the next point. Knowing about our righteousness provokes us to action. That's the next thing. There are blessings that follow righteousness. For example, Psalm 5 verse 12. Psalms 5 verse 12. If you have a good Bible, you should read something like this. The Lord shall bless the righteous. Have you seen that in your Bible? Amen? Amen. The Lord shall bless the righteous with favor Psalm 5 verse 12. The Lord shall bless the righteous. With favor will he encompass him as with a shield. That's what he should say. Psalm 5 verse 12. The Lord shall bless the righteous. With favor will he encompass him as with a shield. Alright? That's Psalms 5 verse 12. I think what they have on the screen is still 1 John 3 8. If you are not seeing it, that's what we are saying, please, from the media. Thank you. So, Psalm 5 verse 12 says, the Lord shall bless who? The righteous. Somebody said, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Oh, come and help me preach better than that today. Say it again. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. 
Psalm 5, verse 2. I really wish it came up. Oh, yeah. I think they are having challenges there. All right. Let's everybody say after me. Say, the Lord shall bless the righteous. The bless the righteous. Say it properly like though you are not afraid of any devil again. Say, the Lord has blessed the righteous. The Lord has the righteous. Say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Listen to me powerfully. God has blessed you. Now, what kind of blessing did he bless us with? He said, with favor. Look at it. It's up, finally. With favor. Someone say, I'm favored. I'm favored. I did not write Bible, low. I did not write Bible. The Lord says, he has blessed you with favor. Like a shield. So, when you are going on the streets of Lagos, if they will catch anybody, it's not you they will catch. Because of this understanding. Let me show you another one. Psalm 92 verse 12. Just speak blessings of the righteous and then we go on to what I really want to say this morning. I'm almost there. Psalm 92 verse 12. See what it says. Psalm 92 verse 12. Okay. It says, the righteous shall flourish. That's what it should say if you have a good Bible. What does it say? Please, if you find it, read for me loud. The righteous shall flourish. Somebody say, I will flourish. Are you flourishing? It says, the righteous shall, not me, shall. Someone say, shall. By your nature, you shall flourish. By your person, you will flourish. I'm not the one that wrote it all. Like a palm tree. That means weather will not affect you. Sakpa will not know your dwelling place. The righteous shall flourish. It didn't just say we prosper. Shall flourish. Shall flourish, people of God. Shall flourish. What a joy to be righteous. I want you to understand, he not say a Christian. Because people have been righteous before Christianity started. Abraham was righteous. Where was the Christianity? So it's not Christianity that means righteousness. That you are answering Christian doesn't mean you are a Christian self. Let alone righteous. It takes faith to be righteous. In that faith disposition, we don't do things wrong. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? By faith, we become righteous. By faith, we live. That righteous state is executed by faith. So what does this say again? What else will happen to righteous? Look at the next one. In, it says, it shall what? Like it shall grow. Somebody say, we grow. You see that? Not only will you flourish, you will grow. Someone say, I'm growing. Close your eyes and say it. Say, I'm growing. I'm growing. Say it one more time. Say, I'm growing. I'm growing. Say, the growing is working. Is working. Say, it's taking, it's taking root. Let's go to another scripture quickly. Proverbs 28, verse 1. Proverbs 28, verse 1. This one is another one that you will understand why I'm quoting it very shortly. What does it say? The wicked one runs away. That's the unrighteous man. Runs away. Uh-huh. When nobody is pursuing him. What does he say? Come on. It's a, when you see anything before this first, before birth has changed. But the righteous shall be bold as a lion. This thing that you're saying, I'm timid. It's not righteous. So. I don't like talking. It's not righteous. So. I can't ask her out. It's not righteous. So. I don't know how to say yes. It's not righteous. So. I don't know how to start new business. It's not righteous. So. The righteous will be bold to start again. The righteous will be bold and stand strong. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying, sir? Not the Oboju strong. You know Oboju? Oh, nothing to me. Oh, God, something we do you. You have to understand, it's not Oboju we are saying here. We are saying the righteous. Can you hear what I'm saying this morning? Shout it loud. Say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So, these are just some of the benefits. You can listen to the last week's message. I mentioned quite some. How that your little multiplies in righteousness. Anything the righteous does multiplies. Anything. Interestingly, good or bad. If it does small bad, it will multiply. If it does small good, it will multiply. Because in the realm of righteousness, we don't label things as right or wrong. We label them as good or bad. Go and write that down. One day you will understand what I just said. So, what I'm saying is that there are blessings to righteousness. 
There is the lifestyle. Of, it, should, it should interest you to go and study after now. Just search in your Bible all that the word of God says about the righteous man. It should interest you. What does God's word have to say about my righteous personality? Now, I want to quickly list out four areas where you must take action for your righteousness to count. That's why I call it, you know, scaling new heights and entering, uh, scaling new, um, new levels of victory and entering new heights through the force of righteousness. So, what are the things that you need to do? For example, in Proverbs 18 verse 10, it tells us that it is important that the righteous participates in his own protection. Please, did you hear what I just said? Let's look at it. Let's look at it. Psalm 18 verse 10. It says, I beg your pardon, what is it? Proverbs 18 10. Sorry. It says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Are you there? Proverbs 18 10. Please read it. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous must have legs to run. There is a time that though the righteous man is bold, he must know when to run. That intelligence to know when, receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, did you understand what I just explained now? Yes. Because some people, they, are, they don't understand wisdom. I'm the righteous of God. When rape come, just bring your chest. No. No. There are things that you are not yet able to handle, sir. There's nothing wrong with that. Understanding that your righteousness does not preclude that you are um, omnipotent. No. It simply means that your nature has been empowered. That you do right from nature, not from actions. So, the righteous man must know when to run to enjoy his safety. Can I hear your amen on that, please? The righteous run net into it and then they are safe. Please, did you see that in your Bible? Yes. Let's look at one more. Psalm 34, verse 7. It says, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and they deliver them. Psalm 34, verse 7. Psalm 34, verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. The Bible tells us that there are angels available to the righteous man. That's those that fear him. Those that have faith in him. So there are angels available to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying, sir? If you don't maximize those angels, you'll be a victim. There are situations of riots that you should stand and say, angels, protect me from the sight of others. That is your spiritual arsenal. You just say, no, 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 no. The, the gunshot was real. It doesn't matter. Your righteousness, consciousness should make you explore the benefits inside. For your protection I'm talking about. I'll soon go to your provision. What are the benefits? You must know that there are angels for your protection. And how do we activate angels? By our prayer and our declarations. Please, are you here? I'm trying to say here. You may not see angels physical, but they are spiritual beings with physical impact. Don't forget angels as a righteous man. They are the ones God always sends to deliver the righteous lot. If God can send angels to deliver Lot, who was called a righteous man in the book of Peter, he can send angels to deliver you, sir. That they will not just see you. We are looking for him, we are looking for him. They can't find him. There's a man of God in this country. They came to assassinate him. And as they came to assassinate him, he said, we are looking for, he said, who are you looking for? He said, we are looking for so and so. Apparently those ones were not, you know, clear about, the, you know, in assassination, you must get the target. Eh? I know you are not assassins, but I'm saying <laughs> you, <laughs> the way you are looking at <laughs> the, way are, the way you are streaming. You must know who you are looking for. Instead of them to say, do you know what the man of God did? I believe it's his angel. I believe it's his angel. He just entered the wall and came out from the wall. Ha. They downed their tools. They down their tools. You know, some of these things we see inside film, they are imaginations that suggest possibility. Yeah. It's very possible. When you see things in film, don't just say it doesn't, like, ah, ah, film trick. Film trick proves that it exists somewhere in somebody's mind. 
Who would have ever thought that somebody can write an essay now in three seconds? Years ago, if they told you to study robotics, you say, mommy doesn't like me. But God was trying to set you up for your future, but you are fighting. Maybe it would have been your mind. Everything must exist at least in three phases. One, in the thoughts. Number two, on paper. Then number three, on reality. Some of us have ideas straight to reality. It doesn't work. It doesn't last. That your business, write it down. Make it plain. Even God wrote scriptures. Eh? You have a great idea, I know. Write it down. Are we getting blessed this morning? So, we are seeing clearly here that the righteous has provision for his deliverance. But he must know how to activate it. Somebody say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Say loud and clear like though you are not afraid anymore. Say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Very powerful. What about your prov- prov- provision? Let's talk about provision. That the righteous will never hunger. Never. Look at that same 37. Psalm 37 verse 9. In fact, let's start from verse 8. See what it says. That's same, just the next verse. That's same 37. It says, Oh, taste and see. If you don't bring it, let me just quote it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Did you hear that? You can see there and you are not tasting. Thou preparest a table before me. The Lord said to me some time back. He said, I will prepare the table where it is you to eat. Some of us, God gives you things to eat. You say, no, I don't like that kind of thing. They ask you, do you want this kind of thing? I don't like it. You are using your deprivation to express yourself before God. He says, I will prepare a table, but you must eat. I can't force you. I say, eh? So, because some of us, that prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You, you, you are just happy to say, I can tell your enemy, oh, beautiful. see my fish. See, if you live like that, you will never eat and you'll be hungry in the presence of God. There are opportunities God will bring your way that if you don't taste it, you will never see that he's good. You need to taste. Sir, to taste is a personal thing, sir. It's a personal thing. If you've not brushed, the taste on your mouth will be different from when you've brushed. If you've brushed, what quantity you take also can affect your taste. So that it is taste. You must taste it rightly. God prepared table before me. For example, let me give you an illustration. Maybe you take a taxi or you go for an interview and you say, let us get you a ride to go home. I say, no, 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 don't worry, I'll take taxi. Oga, okay. you just miss tasting experience. People want to serve you. You say, no, 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 sir. Serve it. Please, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, when opportunity comes to you, stop excusing yourself simply because you want to be courteous. Sit down. Taste. And then see that God is good. There are people that want to give you money without asking for anything. So settle down. Taste. See that the Lord is good. If you don't taste, you will never see. Taste. Learn to relax and eat what the table God has prepared for you. They are calling your name. Ladies and gentlemen, let's stand up for this person. You say, no, 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 don't worry, don't stand up. Stand up. Let them stand up. Let them celebrate you. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, I know at some point some people say, no, all those things are vanity. Let's first of all taste the vanity. She is on this earth. Uh-huh. In your humility, stop missing tasting experiences. Taste and see. That people want to help you. People want to stretch for you. When God wants to give you people that will assist you, you are people like, it doesn't matter. It matters. It will help how you testify about God. Because those that taste will testify. You can tell people, this is what has happened to me. In this ministry, for example, some of you have never tasted of my anointing. Never. There is an anointing in this house. That you've never tasted of. An anointing that can multiply you from where you are. You will know that something is making you better. People will start to confer respect on you like as though you are better than who you are. Your beauty starts to shine. 
you will now start to choose which man you should marry. The same you, because now you have wisdom to answer people. When you talk, it's obvious something is helping you. Taste. You are far. I don't like to stop my man of God. I don't like to stop my man of God. Means if I don't want me to stop. So two gave four. <laughs> but if you must taste, sir, you must dirty the spoon. You must something has to ex- be experienced. Now look at what it says. Let's go to verse nine quickly. Quickly, 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 quickly. Help me. I need to quickly wrap up. Verse nine. Oh, come on, let's make this fast. See the scripture. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. You know that's talking about righteous. Am I correct? He said, for there is no want to them that what? There is no want. That's a very big statement. There is no want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Look at Psalm 84 verse 11. Psalm 84. These are very powerful scriptures. Psalm 84 verse 11. 84, 11. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing. I want you to stop reading bad, bad things in scripture. This one is very kind. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Sir, no good thing means no good thing will he withhold. No good thing. That's your provision because you are righteous. So what are you supposed to do with all this? Listen to me. Now, in all of these things I've described, and I can continue, I can talk about providence, protection, provision, you know, procreation, parenting. I can continue. So, just know that all those things are blessings. I've only given you two now. Let me quickly tell you something. In this realm of righteousness, laboring, hard work is an opportunity. Write it down. Hard work. You see, when people don't work hard, they are not grateful for what they get. I'm telling you, righteousness does not preclude you from diligence. The soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Hard work. Number two, good thinking. In Proverbs chapter 12, verse 5, it says that the thoughts of the righteous is right. Righteous. Make no mistake. Righteousness does not come because you did right things. You do right things because you are righteous. In Proverbs 12, verse 5, the thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. One, trans- one scripture says that the thought of foolishness is sin. Help me check it out. It's there. The thought of foolishness is a sin. It means that the righteous is living below his standard when he's thinking foolishly. So it says the thoughts of the righteous are right. So hard work is important. Number two, good thinking. Good thinking. Don't just work hard, work smart. I told you the story of Jacob and Laban last week. Don't just work hard, work smart. God wants you to benefit from this righteous state. Number three, good talking. If you don't talk, you will never experience the benefit of this righteousness. You know some of us, you've been trained not to be bold. Even to say things, they just say you are proud, you are proud. No. For example, saying I can never be poor again. It's righteousness. It's righteousness. Don't say just because people are saying it. Don't go say, you see, for example, you come out and say, I can never die by accident. It's righteousness. Because the Bible says that thou shalt not suffer my soul or my body to see corruption. No. There's a way believers die. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? The Bible says, how does it say now? It says, precious is the death of the saints to the Lord. Is that not what it says? Yeah. God doesn't want you dying anyhow. Some of you are afraid that I was just fall down and die by Tom Miller Bridge. How did you get there? The thought of foolishness is sin. That thing telling you to go and jump inside Tom Miller is sin. It's a, an invitation to a lesser life. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? That thought telling you to do some stupid things is, is, is not you. That the thought came doesn't mean it's your thinking. 
Not everything that comes to your mind is your own. Satan is allowed to talk to you. God is allowed to talk to you. Angels will talk to you. Demons will talk to you. Others will talk to you. Not every thought that comes to your mind is yours. You are sick. Doesn't mean it's true. The doctor says, you have high blood BP. Doesn't mean it is true. You must therefore filter what you accept as your truth as a righteous man. It's over. That's an opinion. Don't take it. You failed. You lied. It cannot work. Opinion. So with this understanding, how can you fail? When your thoughts alone are empowered to prosper. Your thoughts have the force of divinity. Your beauty cannot be resisted. The wedding must hold. Oh, Jesus. I wish I could, I wish I could become some of us, help you live your life and come back to my life. Because the way some of us are living our lives, it's obvious you need help. And I'm trying to help you here. How can we fail with this? That you are bold. God is backing you up. No good thing will be withheld and you are afraid. No. The purpose of this righteousness status is so that you can do all these things. Be bold. Take initiative. Act. So that the kingdom of God can go forward. So that others can benefit. So that people can go forward. It's not for you alone. These things are not shared. It's not so that your fridge can be full. No. It's so that men can benefit from your righteousness. It's so that your family will never be broke again. It's so that that demon oppressing that family, you can stand by the door of your house and say, you darkness, I command you out and it will go forever. That's what we do with righteousness. Not to prove that, you know, I'm right. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Or that God has corrected your moral rectitude. Don't just be righteous to prove you are righteous. You are righteous to get great results. You are righteous to what? Get great results. Don't be righteous to prove that you are right. Be righteous to prove that you have results to the glory of God. Now listen to this. As you step out of this place from tonight, from tonight, do an exercise. Pace in your room for 30 minutes. Because this teaching is not just for teaching, it's for you to practice. Pace in your room and say, I'm the righteousness of God. Nothing feels in my hands. Nothing feels in my hands. Nothing buys in my hands. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Do, make sure you practice it too. If you're a woman trusting God for your husband, say, I'm righteous of God. I attract the right kind of men. Why are you always attracting wrong men? Why? Why? The righteousness of God in Christ just attracts right men. You say, these are the kind of men coming to me. You can't change it, sir. I don't want this kind of men coming around me again. Making me a second wife. Teaching me how to take in nicotine. I don't need to be compromising all that. I can have my own husband, a good one. So go to your bedroom, look in your mirror, say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I declare I'm married. That state is a divine declaration. Look at your business. Look at and say, carry your card and say, You will never be broke again. I must not tell you the, te the testimony of our budget yet. I will tell you one day, but not today. The testimony of our budget in our house. <laughs> Before our very eye like this was rising. Rising. And we've not been stranded. I want to say to you today. This righteousness is not for posing. It's not to prove I am righteous. I'm righteous. I'm righteous. I'm, that's not what it is for. It's so that you can provoke great results. Exploits on earth. So the celebration of our righteousness is the celebration of our possibilities. What we can do. And I'll close with this right now. What must we not forget to do as righteous? Number one is to take care of the condition of our hearts. The righteous man is righteous because his heart has been changed. When I say heart, I don't mean the physiological heart, the chest. No, I mean the spirit man. You must make sure things don't corrupt your spirit easily. Offense, especially. The righteous man is not easily offended. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying here? Don't
cannot be a dubious person. So I'm talking about the heart. Some Christians are righteous, but they are dubious. They are cunning. Do you know what I mean by that, please? They are crafty. They think they are clever. Don't do that. You will you will step down the glory of your righteousness. Don't be clever in your own eye. Be doing why you. That's the local word. Am I? Are you hearing what I'm trying to say here? Don't be doing it. You know what it does to you? It takes away the glory of your testimony. Stop lying as a righteous man. How do you feel when you cut lies through your teeth and you're looking straight? That, some of us, we are not just lying. Some of us are stubborn. Nothing can enter your heart. Anything they say, they're on their own. Never cooperative. Some of us, we are not doing anything for God. Up till now, with all the way God has kept you, it's not changing how you are responding to him. Please listen to me. Righteousness is a gift that you must preserve with faithfulness. For the faithful man shall abound with blessings. So I urge you today, to make sure that you keep your heart. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18. That we shall shine brighter and brighter. But in verse 23. It says guard your heart with all diligence. Proverbs 4 23. For out of it. Are the issues of life. What that simply means is that. If you don't guard your heart. The issues of your life will be complicated. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. Just stop being stubborn to the word of God. God has been trying to explain something to you for so long. You are struggling with it. Please listen to this. The food of the righteous is faith. Feed your faith fat. After this discussion, don't just go and say, I'm ready and just go and start to do it. No. Listen to this message or any other message that will help your faith to understand this message Till it is such that faith is bathed in you. For example, in this message, I said you should start a new business. You should start a, you should go register that business. But if you don't feed fat on faith, you will start business and it will fail. It will look like God is not there. There are things that the righteous man will take as steps because his faith is fat. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying at all? So the purpose of this righteousness consciousness is that the force of faith will allow you to speak bold things. So when you live here, it should show your conversation that you are the righteous. For example, somebody here should go and prize his wedding gown. I mean, her wedding gown. And his wedding suit. His wedding suit, yes. You should. You should probably go and check that shop and say, how much is this shop at Alade? What do you want to be selling? Because you know that in the hands of the righteous man, nothing fails. It should not just make you feel like you are right. It should make you move to action to do exploits. Please, did you hear what Pastor just said now? And if you are doing well already, there is room for more. There is room for more. You can do better. New levels, sir. New heights. New levels. New heights. New levels. You were born as an ambassador. Now, please let me just quickly drop three things to the heart of the righteous man. How many of us are righteous here this morning? Shout a big hallelujah. I close my message with these three thoughts. Number one, the righteous man doesn't see impossibilities. Stop carrying impossible. Who said so? There is always a way around it. Always. Always. The righteous man doesn't see impossible because he's talking not as human again. He's seeing possibilities. Number two, the righteous man hates mediocrity. It is a disgust to a righteous man not to be excellent. Because you are the righteous of God, you seek to do excellent things. The Bible says that approving of things that are excellent. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying here? Number one, he hates what? Impossibility. Number two, he what? Hates mediocrity. 
Did you hear that? Then number three, the righteous man hates ignorance. Ignorance. He's seeking to perpetually know more. Are you getting what I'm saying here? It is a disgust for the righteous man to stay ignorant. And I want to pray for you today that your business will grow. Those of us that don't have business, your thoughts are right. That business coming to your mind is right. If you are going for an interview, that question they ask you, the answer on your tongue is right. Even if it was wrong, they will take it as a mistake for you in your favor. You know why? Not because they like you unnecessarily. It's because you are the righteousness of God. And people can sense it. When with this understanding, you can't be going frowning everywhere. Because joy is your strength. Joy is your strength. I hope you've been blessed this morning. Let's rise to our feet and let's give God thanks. So I close with that. What are you going to do with this righteousness? Don't just be coming in Sunday, in Wednesday, out, Sunday, Wednesday, out, Sunday, Wednesday, out. No. You must be growing. Hallelujah. Now today you've heard something about the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What are you going to do about it? I want us to lift up two prayer points to God. Number one, Father, help me manifest my righteousness consciousness. That Lord, from today, I will live out this righteousness in reality. Not in theory, but in practical. Lift up your voice and pray 60 seconds. Can I have you pray with me this morning? And say, Lord, I will live out the wealth of righteousness. I, go and study this righteousness. It's not over. Go and study it after I have Lord, I want us to pray and say, Lord, I will live out this righteousness to your glory. Is somebody praying? Whatever is not beautiful about you before is beautified by this teaching. I want us to pray and say, Lord, I receive grace to live out righteousness to the full. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Can you say a better amen? amen? Everybody put up your right hand. My second prayer for us. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. Right now, I want to put up your, put up your right hand and put, up, put your right foot forward. And say, in the name of Jesus. Say loud and clear like you're not afraid. Say, in the name of Jesus. As a church, we go forward. We make progress. We increase on every side. In the name of Jesus, we violate everything that is not in line with the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We declare that we have the life of God, the divine life, producing divine results, having results in the order of divinity. We are not failures, we are success. I am a success, I succeed, I prosper, I do well, we do well, in the name of Jesus, nothing overwhelms us. There is no sickness in our body. There is no failure in our bloodline. In the name of Jesus, we are outstanding. We are outstanding. I am outstanding. I shine. Every day of this week, I am a light to my community. I am right because I am righteous. I do right because it's my nature. I have the mind of Christ. I have the life of Christ. I think right thoughts. I think right thoughts. My thoughts are right. In the name of Jesus, I produce results. I generate impact. I do exploits to the glory of God. My life is not ordinary. I give God all the glory. Somebody shout your loudest amen. So Father, we thank you for this teaching. Let it enter into the spirits of every man. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, you can take your seat in God's presence. Amen. Hallelujah. I am trusting God to raise a church of entrepreneurs. People that start real estate and it shows that God is with us. June 11, we'll be having a guest near this one here by the grace of God. And it's such a beautiful thing. I want you to be here present. Let us teach you how to grow. You don't have to be small in your life. I'm not saying you should do fake things. No. Do things that you watch grow. I have grown. I've seen people grow in this ministry. Yes. And they are still growing. I know you are doing well in your office, but God can add more to your income. God can change your story. And I know when God changes your story, you will give to the church, won't you give? You remember your pastor, won't you remember your pastor? 
I am interested in watching you grow. Yes, sir. sir, don't beg. Don't beg. Because soon, you'll be the one giving. Soon. I want you to please insist. You are progressing. Amen. The problem comes when you don't do anything about what I'm just telling you. Do you know, when I was in secondary school, I don't know about this, but I did not like a certain thing about my body. I stayed in the mirror and I said, you are the finest man everybody has ever seen. Not one day. I'm not kidding you. I said consistently that my, my, the texture of my skin is amiable to the camera. <laughs> I said it not, I didn't even know I would do fast story like this. I just, my friends used to yap me about my skin. Then I noticed I used to have rashes, you know. I looked at the mirror and said, you are changing. I'm telling you, the, maybe I've never said it to you before. Mirror became my best friend. If you ask, recently I was starting to put mirror everywhere. You remember? If you don't know me, mirror, that's what they used to do slave trade. You remember? It's a very fascinating thing. You see something and you see yourself inside. You look at the back of mirror, there's nothing inside. But it's reflecting you. There's power in mirror. That's why the Bible speaks about the word of God being like a mirror. The other thing it says about a mirror is a friend. So you don't have friends that look at you well. Your friends always lie to you. You know the mirror never lies. It never lies. That's why they say when a witch looks at the mirror, if you tell the truth, this is what I wish. <laughs> What's my? I looked at the mirror and said, look, young man, you will grow. You are handsome. I said it till I am. Just, oh, this man just handsome like that. Go and carry your mirror. Carry your mirror and declare yourself married. I spoke to the, my children. I spoke about their looks. None of them failed being a model. Go and carry your, and say this thing. Don't think that it's love. Oh, nobody knows the trouble I face. You don't like your dentition, speak to it. You don't like how you look like, speak to it. That's the power in the vapor of a righteous man. You don't like your account, speak to it. Righteousness is not just to celebrate, I'm righteous. Very good. Don't stop celebrating. But it is to change things about your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Sometimes I put the picture of my wife or my sons and I start to declare, you, you must hear the word of God. It's not true. I did not place you go to, they say when you start to feel like getting married suddenly, your picture is in Shiloh. It's very true. Pictures are points of contact. There are people that know what to do that when they stab a picture, the person dies there. Oh yes. Oh Yes. That we don't practice it does not mean we don't know it. That's part of being righteous. Not innocent. Innocent people don't know about evil. They are naive. Righteous know evil but we just refuse to practice it. <laughs> we know what to do. So I'm saying you don't think that righteousness is just one nice state. We are righteous people. Oga, that's what I'm doing here. I'm telling you about divinity. I'm telling you about you being empowered with life. Are you here I'm trying to say here? Yeah? Yes, this should make you live perpetually under inspiration. Yes, Personally, I believe that any Christian not inspired daily is not a righteous, conscious person. Yes, if you are not inspired, righteousness will do you like you smoke cocaine. I'm telling you, I've never smoked cocaine, but at least I watch film. You understand? It will do you like something is doing you, sir. Not like just go and just say, ah, I had to put a message in me. No, that's not what it is. I'm telling you, sir, you go back like I see what next should I conquer? What next can stop me? You look at the mirror and say, you this man, you're never married. You must marry in the name of Jesus. No, I think I'm talking about him. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying here? You take yourself seriously. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying, sir? You look at the situation of your family. The other day, my son called me and said he was seeing things running up and down in his front. I say in my lineage. In my lineage. See, I am not even afraid of who to taunt my own son. I said, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Me, Solemeta, he's here today. He will testify of it himself. That you are seeing things. See, you, can, you are not afraid of who to taunt my own lineage. He will try anything. He's Satan. Yes, sir. 
That's what I'm telling you. Don't just think this message was a nice message. That just No, go and listen. What I was saying, I was taking my time. I'm telling you, go and listen and strengthen your spirit, man. Be just up. Be just up. Be just up. There's greatness on your inside, sir. So don't look until you can talk like I'm talking. You have never understood it all. You go, you go with understanding. I'm not, I'm not a, a just sir. No. Hello, sir. How are you, sir? God bless you. How is it doing? What's going to happen? You, you are taking charge. Not begging. I am not being rude, though. I'm not saying that. No, 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 no. You are taking charge. You are, when you talk, they know that, ah, I had a funny conversation on my um, son's group yesterday. I just batched in. Mama called me and said, you don't talk on this group. Why didn't you talk? I was speaking. When I finished, man said, I like how your comportment is in writing. You stayed composed without distraction. He had to comment. Did he have to comment? Did he have to comment? You, you meet us there, sir. We are a step ahead of you. And we serve it to your delicacy. You think you're crazy? I will show you crazy. Please, people of God, go back and hear this message. Listen to my messages. And like I said, I'm speaking from my spirit. But please, do me a favor. Don't waste this message. Listen to it. Listen again. You might not understand everything at once. Listen again. And let it bless your heart. Let's give to God. Our tithes and offerings. Praise God.